Well, my character's name is B. She's 12. Um, she's a young girl. She's going through kind of a tough time in her life. And in doing so and coping with all her emotions, she discovers she has this kind of superpower. She can see everyone's ifs. I play uh, the man upstairs, who's also 12. Uh, and, but I help uh, uh, young Kaylee here um, to sort of find some ways to pair imaginary friends who have lost their kid uh, with new people or reunite them with some of the kids that they'd, they'd basically lost. So that's my, my job is kind of a, a bit of a headhunter, but in a more pleasant way. Originally, I was going to take a break from acting because so we were doing the last season of Walking Dead and I just decided I wanted to take a break and go to high school. So I told my team and then I got a call and my agent was like, I know you want to take a break, but John Krasinski has this movie. It's called If. And that's all I knew. So immediately I was interested because I, I knew John and I loved him. And I wanted to do something fun. I have a lot of little cousins and things like that. And they can't watch anything that I've been in. So I'm really excited about it. But just reading the script for the first time, I just fell in love with it. And I'm, I don't think I've ever connected with a script so quickly. Oh, it was great. You know, I remember him pitching me this movie. And he was standing in my kitchen. And it was just, I was like immediately moved to tears, which is, you know, not like me because I'm fairly dead inside, but I was uh, uh, blown away. I mean, I, to me, it felt like a, a truly a live action Pixar movie, and, and it was something. I know that it's just a standard thing to say, but having kids, but having having something that I can show them of my own work that doesn't um, require you know eternal therapy afterwards is amazing. And so for me, that was that was a huge huge draw. So the, but also, I think with John, sort of, he's able to kind of uh, walk that fine line. Where it's a movie that is, you know, kids are obviously going to love, but you know, there's parents are the ones who take the kids to those movies, so it has to be something. There has to be something that's equally uh, compelling for for grownups. So I found it was like it worked so well for grownups, but you know, the, this wonderful byproduct is that kids love it as well. Mm. Lots of ifs. Yeah. Lots, <laughs> um, lots of funny. Lots of fun. Yeah. Lots of it's emotion. It's so funny too. It's very emotional lots of emotion, as well. Yeah. It's very deep. I'm just so excited for everyone to see it. I think there's so many things that you can take from it. That's one of the things I love about it. It's up, up to your interpretation. Yeah. And it's also in those er earlier screenings that we've been doing for the movie. It's that great feeling that, um, you know, that, that people are see seeing and connecting to the same things mm -hmm. that we are, you yeah. know, and you kind of, oh, because you also have that nervous moment yeah, before definitely. you show it to anybody that you think, oh, what if they don't love it the way we love it? Um, but in many cases, it's they love it more, and they see mm -hmm. things that maybe I didn't even see. Or yeah. Notice. So I think that's been pretty cool. There's a lot of words that I, I think I'll say magical. I would say enchanting. Oh! And if is not a Disney movie, but right. we still nailed that. We did. Didn't we? How did this project come together? Honestly, it was 150% for my kids. I've always wanted to make a movie for my kids, but I wasn't quite sure what path to take. I had had the idea to do something with imaginary friends like 10 years ago, but I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I remember spending so many hours watching my daughters go into this magical world that, you know, as parents were not invited into. And it wasn't just the joy and the happiness that was on their face. It was actually the authenticity, this fearlessness that they had in there. They could, they could be anything, say anything, dress up like anything, whether it was a tea party, a dance party, or just doing funny voices. And that was so amazing. And I thought there's something there, but it wasn't until the pandemic when I started to see that bright light start to dim. And I started to see them doing fewer and fewer imaginary games. And I remember they started to let the real world in as we all do. And they started asking big questions like, are we gonna be all right? And I thought that's my end of the movie because that, that's the moment, that's the definition of growing up. That moment you say, is this where I have to give up being a kid in order to be an adult? And I said, no. And let me write a movie about it so that you know that that magical world you created with all those hopes, dreams, ambitions, love is always there. Yes, we all have bad days, but you can always go back. The inspiration for the ifs, um, I'm not quite sure where they came from, which leads me to believe that my imaginary friend created them um, because he must know them. Um, but the inspiration for the ifs, when I was writing the um, script, I started to draw all these terrible, I'm a terrible artist, so I had terrible drawings. But I remember just thinking it would be great to get the brass tacks of what each character looked like. I knew um, what Blue looked like, and I wrote it for Steve. I knew what Blossom looked like in my head, and I wrote it for Phoebe. And I remember Lewis, I, I wrote for Lou Gossett Jr. as well. And, I, and this was long before I got any of them to say yes. So 
Um, but I had them in my head. It was the, all the other ifs that became um, more and more fun to work on because I was, again, inspired by my kids. When you ask kids about what they're um, imagining, it's never what we think, which is like flying or living underwater or something like that. That's way too basic for kids. It's always something really specific and a little bit weird. So I thought I'm going to push the boundaries of my own imagination and come up with things like a, you know, an ice cube and a half glass of water or something like that. I mean, this cast is the best cast I will ever have. That I know. Um, it all starts and ends with Kaylee. I mean, Ryan uh, was such a, uh, I, I've been a fan of his forever. I'm lucky enough to be friendly with him. We had been talking about doing something together and I said, maybe I'll do something with imaginary friends and he thought that was cool. It was when I had this idea to have an emotional undercurrent that he said, let's do it. Jumped on board because he has kids of his own. But I think he would say the same thing as me, which is, as much as this movie sounds like a lot of fun between him and I, we needed Kaylee and we needed someone to be better than we could ever dream of. And I don't know what it was, but there was something magical about her. When she walked into my office the first time, she hadn't even opened her mouth and I knew she had the part. Then we were supposed to do a few scenes in my office, Ryan and I. And I think we got through one scene and Ryan just said, can we all go home? Because it doesn't get better than that. And it didn't. And she goes on to not only deliver one of the best performances I've ever seen, but she also pulls off this magic trick. Because in this movie in particular, it's not just entertainment. She's actually your foray into imagination and to your childhood. Things that are very personal to you, she has to represent, which is impossible. And what she does is she represents every member of the audience. So if you're a kid and you're watching this, she's the kid. She gets to be around all these ifs, and that's really cool. But for adults, she's your invitation to go back to your childhood. So... She is this person having that debate of whether or not she should grow up. And I think a lot more uh, of us adults should wake up every morning and say, should we or should we not grow up? Because the answer might be no. <laughs> My character Blue, well, oddly is purple. So that's the first thing that's going to trip you up a little bit. And he is one of the imaginary friends. And he is in search to reconnect with the young man who had conjured him as his imaginary friend all those years ago. And so his journey in this is to reconnect and become a, a part of his life again. Apparently everyone John asked to be in this movie said yes instantly and I was one of those people because he's obviously very talented but he's super, I know, hard to believe, super nice, really sweet, family guy um we go way back obviously and uh and yeah he's uh he's an incredibly good person and i love the idea of this movie love the idea of the character so i was all in i worked with john because john and john had a different a lot of times when you do animation people are back in another room behind a glass wall and speak into a mic and give you feedback which is great. Um, John had a bit of a different take where he would actually sit in the room with you and we'd have conversations all the way through as, as we were taping it. And so he, uh, in that way, was you know, much more proactive with the character. It, my spin on it, well, again, I was going by what John wanted and how he envisioned this character, which was such a, an earnest, kind of a puppy like a really, like I kept imagining a very, very sweet golden retriever puppy, just uh, an entity that wanted to please everyone at all times. And, and that's kind of where we started. What can audiences expect from If? It's, it's deceptively um, heartwarming. You know, it's obviously very funny and it's this very magical world that John has created. And just the, the images and the, the design of what this movie looks like is incredible. But there's, there's a big heart and there will be moments that will make you feel, I think, very deeply. And I think that's a good thing. You'll laugh, you'll cry. <laughs>